lands on the Mediterranean island of Malta, bringing U.S. staff officers to a joint assemblage of Allied military leaders. Leaving the plane, Fleet Admiral Ernest J. King, Chief of Naval Operations. The welcoming dignitaries include W. Averill Harriman, American ambassador to the Soviet Union. General of the Army George C. Marshall and Lieutenant General Brian B. Somerville, greeted by Field Marshal Wilson, the head of the British Joint Staff Mission at Washington, and Mr. Harriman. In advance of the main conference, meetings with the British at Malta are attended by the American Chief of Staff and the Commanding General of Army Service Forces. The Commander-in-Chief of the United States Fleet will discuss naval operations with British representatives. These Anglo-American discussions pave the way for meetings with the Russian staff and lead to complete accord on combined military plans for final defeat of the common enemy. The conferees include British Field Marshals Alexander and Sir Alan Brooke, Admiral Sir Andrew Cunningham, Air Marshal Sir Charles Portal, and Field Marshal Wilson. In the harbor outside Malta, Prime Minister Churchill salutes from a British man of war as he greets President Roosevelt on the bridge of an American warship. They will meet with Premier Stalin at Yalta in the Crimea. The town of Yalta lies at the foot of the mountains in the bay on the Black Sea. This ancient Russian Riviera resort is 30 miles east of Sevastopol, where a Liberty ship is now unloading Signal Corps equipment for delivery to conference headquarters. A complete communication system will be set up to enable the Anglo-American Soviet leaders to maintain contact with their respective capitals. The truck convoys climb through the mountains, typical of this section of the Russian Crimea. The conference takes place in the Livadja Palace, built in 1911 as a summer home by Tsar Nicholas II. Here, quarters were provided for many of the conferees. Signal Corps crews wire the building. The Army Navy Message Center. Telephone exchange. At Yalta Airport, the incoming procession of American and British delegates begins. Secretary of State Edward R. Stettinius, Jr., greeted by V. M. Molotov, People's Commissar for Foreign Affairs. Anthony Eden, British Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs. The Prime Minister. The President meets Russian dignitaries. Inspecting the Russian Honor Guard. The Roosevelt Stallion Churchill talks begin Sunday morning, 4th February. The Russian Premier arrives at Livadja Palace for the first meeting. Prime Minister Churchill enters. The leaders of the three allied nations seated around the conference table with their aides. In talks extending through eight days, they make decisions aimed at sealing the doom of Nazi Germany and German militarism. It was announced that the meetings resulted in closer coordination of the military effort of the three allies than ever before. Plans were made for Germany's occupation and control, as well as for maintaining order and establishing popular governments in liberated countries. The statement was signed by the three leaders on 11th February. For the benefit of photographers, a between-meetings gathering of the dignitaries in the courtyard of Livadja Palace.
The Crimea statement also calls for a United Nations Security Conference to be held at San Francisco on 25th April. 